What a transition layup. Incredible speed and quickness. Now here's Indiana. He's got to quiet him down. Henderson with a long-range shot. Nover got a hand on it. Knocked out of bounds. It will be out to Indiana. What a thing of beauty watching the Michigan running game. This possession off the glass by Jalen Rose. That's the kick to Jimmy King. Up, up, and away. Damon Bailey will inbound. Really important for Indiana to make the perimeter shot. They have to break the Michigan defense down with at least a five passing. Jimmy King is trying to guard Cheney. They go low to Nova against Weber. Nova's become a big-time scorer on a big game against Kentucky. A 29, a career high. Bailey with a three. Weber with a rebound. And Indiana has been sensational with its three-point shooting so far this year. The last two games, they've really put it up better than 20 times versus the first 13. Only took 13 attempts. Howard backs it out with Nova on him. This is King, and now back to Jalen Rose to reset it. Henderson playing against Weber. We have speed against power. Oh, with Weber and Howard down low. Tough to get rebounds against these guys. Juwan Howard's an excellent passer. Couldn't get the roll on that shot, and here comes Indiana. Cheney is so smooth. They need a big day out of Cheney. The last two games, he's had 14 points. Cheney will drive from three, and Indiana can't buy one. Henderson, offensive rebound. First bucket for the Hoosier. He's an agile player. He's a just oh, turnover on the inbounds in the basketball. So Indiana gets the ball back. 18-14 to go. First half. Just underway from Chrysler Arena. Number two against number six. It's amazing. They make a few free throws. Indiana can be in here unbeaten and maybe number one. 18 for 36 against Kentucky. Four for 13 against Kansas in their two losses. And they are shooting under 70% as a team from the line. Very unlike an Indiana team under Bob Knight. Bosco playing against Cheney. Cheney should be a little too quick for him. Bosco caught up with him that time. Bailey, nice foul score. Foul pass to Greg Graham. That's Indiana basketball. Cut without the ball. Go to the goal. Excellent two-man game. Bosco starting because Jackson is injured. He's got some range. Bosco was big in their win over Cincinnati last year in the NCAA tournament semifinals. Scored nine big points after they were down by seven. For the season, he's shooting less than 30% from three-point range, but he can hit them. He had two big threes against Indiana here last year. Henderson with a turnaround baseline jumper. Got another one. He's going to make Weber have to guard him defensively. He is really looking to score. Something he has not done the latter part of the season. So he far. has four of Indiana's six. Here comes the three going back the other way. And Henderson with another rebound. Almost stolen. It is stolen by Rose. Great anticipation. And the pass didn't have enough snap on it. Steve Fisher told me yesterday, out of all the players he's ever coached, that Jalen Rose has the best instincts of any player he's coached. And that includes Glenn Rice, Ramil Robinson. Weber misses the three. And if you're unfamiliar with Michigan, Weber is their best three-point shooter. That amazes me. I'd rather see him down in the boxes inside. Branch, nice body control to get it home. He's athletic. He's got good speed and quickness. Went to the bench the last two games because Bobby Knight was really upset with the play defensively of Graham and Bailey against Kentucky. Graham has hit 50% or better in his last 10 games. Weber's got to go down inside. He's got to go down to the boxes. Howard, the 6'9 sophomore, hits the jumper. Had a big game against Wisconsin. 18 points, 20 rebounds. Has a great work ethic. Indiana's hit its last four after missing its first four. Indiana's got to pass the ball three, four... At least five times with each possession in their half-court game. You can break down a young team defensively. You can make them get impatient. Jalen Rose with a reach-in foul. Michigan is such a dominant team on a glass. If you don't make your shot really, really can and get excellent execution and offensive efficiency with each possession, you're really in trouble. Nover with a high arcing jumper. Michigan averaging nearly 12 rebounds a game more than the opposition. That's a heck of a margin. I thought Nova shot the ball too quickly. Another three from James Bosco. That really hurts you when the complimentary players are knocking down threes. 10-8 Michigan. Everything we thought we'd have so far. Indiana's got to get more movement. Bailey 
shooting the ball too quickly. Shooting the ball too quickly. The Michigan likes that. Rose baseline against Graham. Little line drive jumper missed. Here's Henderson. Henderson allowed to rebound inside because Weber's playing on a perimeter. His fourth rebound in the first three and a half minutes of the game. Let's see, there's one pass. Now one pass and a shot. That's not their basketball. Henderson very short, and Bob Knight up off the bench. He agrees with you, Dick. Henderson got back in a piece of it, but Weber jams anyway. Weber is so quick from the floor and taking the ball to the goal. He has the quickest bounce off the floor, like the Spalding little pink ball. Boom, he... Boy, does he bounce off the floor, Mike. And here's nearly a steal by Jimmy King. Picks and setting up good shots, they're not doing it. Exactly, Mike. Boys and patience. Here's another quick shot. He nails that one, though, Cheney. Cheney drains that one, and the lead is cut back to two. He has become one of the top seniors in America. No doubt he and Allen Houston, I believe, are one, two as the senior class. Jimmy King left alone, and Nover gets the rebound. Indiana doesn't want to go up and down the floor and transition with Michigan. Here we go again. Graham with the first shooting opportunity. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. See, that just plays into their hands. Gets Three the on one. That's Michigan's game. You shoot quickly. They rebound. Three on one. Get the numbers and get the deuce. The key is if you shoot quickly, you better make them. And if you want to really chart and get into efficiency, Michigan wants to score at least 60% of the time in their transition game. Nover. Bailey, who has a tremendous 3-1 to one assist to turnover ratio. Cheney gets up so quickly off the ground. Well, they do a little isolation for Cheney. They move the ball with three or four passes, get him into an isolation, one-on-one, -on -one and hits a little jump. Power inside, Jawan Howard. Really quick feet on the boxes inside. An excellent low post player who favors going to his left. As the first real screen I saw was by Nova. The lead is back to four. They better pull up the Sloan screen 45 and get some screens <laughs> like they used to do with Sloan. But oh, there's a nice screen, nice curl move. Cheney got caught after turning behind it, double clutch. Good defense inside by Michigan. You notice one shot, Indiana. This is the one area you think you can really hurt Michigan is in the game, and they get a good two-man play to Howard, and he converts. Jawan Howard now has half a dozen. He's averaging 14-5. And Bob Knight is going to get Chris Reynolds in the ball again. Excellent defensive player. They missed Henderson, a little curl move. Today, in addressing his team at a meeting, he said, let me tell you this, bad enough in 40 minutes we're going to get hurt with some offensive rebounds, transition layups. In a half-court situation, we have to play them tough and not allow any lob passes to layups, backdoor cuts, or drives to the goal. If we do allow those, we're complicating matters. Fouls on Jimmy King. Damon Bailey will come out. Chris Reynolds, who has been on a shooting tear, he's hit 17 of his last 21 field goals has come in. Like Bailey, an excellent assist to turnover ratio yeah not a shooter at all those numbers are misleading they're all layups in transition exactly nover with a long range jumper and he hit it nover has really developed some range he was really helped with that uh, tour of europe with the big 10 all-stars this year he's become a better offensive player he's had to with the loss of eric anderson could be an offensive foul on weber no, they got uh, the call him to travel it was going to be one or the other he really muscled his way in there only the second michigan turnover and that's been one of their problems this year dick with the turnover we're going to watch some isolation down inside there is weber trying to post they're going to try to double he likes the spin to the right he walked before the contact good call excellent officiating through this henderson giving up about 30 35 pounds down low indiana with the ball down by four and Graham threw it behind Nova. That's the part that'll frustrate the general. Not getting a shot, turning the ball over. And he was telling Phil Bova something else was going on, like holding. You want to watch defense. Chris Reynolds plays the ball as tough as anyone. Probably the only guy that can match him is Derek Phelps down in North Carolina and playing the basketball. Cheney playing Rose up on top. evaluation of the strength of your team and last year last oh his loose ball Jalen Rose was off balance they get it inside Riley and this will be a blocking call on Chris Reynolds Chris Weber has such an awareness he was anticipating to cut down the lane before the guy even went to the goal you watch him come up with a loose ball 
Weber's going to get the loose ball now, kicked out to him, and here he is around the back. He's spotting them already, he spots his teammate Howard. Last year, when Michigan beat Indiana here, 68 to 60, that was the turning point when they started to believe. When they started to believe they really were super. Because from that point on, they ripped off eight in a row before they lost to Duke in a final game. And then they lost to Duke this year and have won 11 in a row. The only team to beat them since beating Indiana has been Duke. This is Eric Riley, the seven-footer who was a starter as a sophomore, the number two rebounder in the Big Ten. Now he fights for minutes behind the super sophomore. You know, he told me today in the locker room, he said, it's been tough for me mentally to really deal with that. But the fact that we're winning and I'm just going to do my best has made it a little bit easier. Same way for Michael Calley, who's in there right now. He was Mr. Basketball. That's why I believe they have the best pure talent in America. When two guys can score in double figures two years ago and start, they can't make the starting lineup as we watch the jumper by Henderson with a soft touch to the baseline. That shows you how tough they are. 20 to 16. Well, sometimes with all this talent, coaching gets overlooked, but I think uh, Steve Fisher has done an incredible job with this club, especially with all the youth. Here's a uh, follow by Palenka, who gets a foul underneath. You know, you mentioned Steve Fisher, Mike, and he worked on that play that we just seen yesterday in practice from the high post area, dumping it down to Weber. He wants to get Weber into the three-second area where Steve Fisher has excelled. He's allowed the players the freedom to express themselves and utilize their talents. He hasn't tightened them up like a lot of guys do and overcoach a little bit. He's allowed them to play. He's put a little structure to them, but he's allowed them to be themselves. 20 to 16. Nover trying to go inside. And it looked like Weber got a piece of him on the way by. See, I think Indiana's playing too quick. I don't believe that they're really getting enough execution out of their half-court game. I firmly believe against a young team like Michigan, if you make five or six passes in screen, you could break them down defensively and get a good look at the basket. Give that foul to Riley instead of Weber. Henderson. Boy, he's got a nice touch. I'll tell you, he's knocking it down, having a big game, trying to take Weber away from the basket. He has eight points, and Bob Knight said, as a freshman, probably more than any other freshman that I've had, he pleased me the way he played. See, they got to get the ball in Weber's hands a little. Riley with a brick from the baseline, and here's a foul on Weber over the back. Indiana did a good job blocking out on the help side because Michigan probably excels better than most in playing the offensive rebound and converting it. Indiana's got to really move the ball. They've been averaging three passes per possession. We're charting this one pass shot. Henderson, four out of seven. Damon Bailey with an offensive rebound. Gets it out to Todd Leary. Leary for 30 is in for the first time. Cheney for three. Boy, and Indiana is just unloading in a hurry and from outside. And that's not their style, Mike. That's really not their style when you talk about Indiana in the big games. Although they are shooting 40% from the season from the three-point line. Weber will try another three. Leary with a long rebound. Weber back. Challenges him and gets Nice move by Leary, taking the ball to the goal. Left hand, reverse layup. Played with Eric Montross in high school when they won the state championship in Indianapolis. Junior from Indianapolis. We are tied at 20. The one thing that Indiana has to be pleased with, they're making it a half-court game. Michigan has not been able to run up and down the court in the first half in transition. Oh, they got that one fast-break basket that put them up 2 to nothing, and that's really been it. And they've really neutralized Jalen Rose, who excels in the open court. Where they isolate Ryan. Riley down low, and Indiana comes out with it. Bailey with his head up all the way to Henderson. That could be an offensive foul, and it is. Good call by the official. I don't think there was any doubt. He lowered the shoulder. He made contact. Excellent defensive position by Michigan. Here's David Bailey pushing the ball up the court. There's Henderson. Lays the shoulder right into the defensive player. Take another look from another angle. Eric Riley's right there, and there's Henderson lowering the shoulder into him. Boy, when you start your drive from that far out, Dick, these guys are too quick not to have someone get in front of you. You know, it's amazing. Riley will probably be drafted in the first two rounds of the NBA draft. And here it's it is. a non-starter. doesn't start. Tied at 20. See, that's the, that's the play that we're working on. Getting the ball from up on top, down and into the post area. Howard with a miss. This is Leary to Bailey. 
Nova muscles his way in, and he's fouled. He has really asserted himself offensively here in the second part of the season after the first 10 games. He's becoming much more active down inside. But again, if I'm Steve Fisher, I have to like the pace that Indiana's playing at because they are really shooting the ball so quickly. Although you would think that that pace would do Michigan a favor, here they are on the Wolverines' home court, and it's tied at 20. And Matt Nover will go to the line, give them a chance to uh, take the lead. 51.7% free throw shooter. He was 13 for 20 against Kentucky. Everybody said they shot only 18 for 36 against Kentucky. But you have to remember this. Calvert Chaney, Bailey, and their really excellent shooters, Leary, were not on the line. It was Nova, who's normally in the 50 percentile area. He shot 65%. And Henderson, who's a 50% shooter, was like 4 for 10. Nova misses him both. 8.42 to go first half. And the intensity has died down just a little bit from the opening moment. I, if I were Jalen Rose, I'd try to slide inside and post up down in the boxes and take advantage of Leary. Little Eminem -er -er with size. I'd slide down inside rather than play up on a perimeter here. Michigan hasn't hit a field goal in four and a half minutes. Rose leans into one, doesn't get it. Indiana on a 6 nothing lead run. They can take the lead here. Great pass by Bailey to Nover. No basket, he travels. Two possessions, they come up empty. Super Tuesday from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Number two against number six. We are tied at 20 with 8.09 to go first half. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale, glad you could join us tonight. This should be super down to the buzzer. Just tighten up that seatbelt, baby, and get ready to ride with us because this is going to be a beauty all the way. Rose backing him in and got Leary down in the low post, like you said. That's where he has to go on him. He's got great size, his excellent touch around the basket. Clutch player was big against Kansas and North Carolina. He likes the big marquee game. Graham. Hey, back in there for Steve Fisher. They're doubling up on Weber on the interior. And they got oh, that's a foul on Weber. Well, post play inside, backing them in. That's two on Chris. If there's one area of Chris Weber really has to work on, and he spoke to me about it yesterday, and he agreed, is how to move without the basketball, how to establish post position. Now, there he is as he turns in Eddie Hightower with the offensive foul. Makes contact. Good call by Hightower. Good officiating crew with Hightower, Phil Bolden, Jim Burr. Yeah, three excellent guys. Little curl move right here for Bailey. Ryan Evans, number 34, is in for the first time. The 6'8 freshman. He had a big game against Seton Hall in the final of the NIT. Had eight points, seven rebounds. Evans, good pass. Cheney at the baseline with that sweet touch. That was excellent patience. They got Cheney the ball down in deep. Good movement of the basketball. They reversed it. Tied at 22. The bomb from King. Save. Jimmy's been shooting the ball well from three-point range. He's become a real defensive stopper, too. Bailey got by King, kicks it outside. The long jumper by Evans. Doesn't miss that in practice. I mean, he was like automatic today at the workout. Uh, he's now four out of 18 under real game conditions. Yeah, he really presses in game action. Jalen Rose with that uh, set shot more than anything. I said Bosco reached in, nearly got it out of bounds to Indiana. Doesn't look pretty. Coming up next, Alabama will travel to number nine, Arkansas. And Daryl Hawkins with 14.7 points a game, shooting 65% from the floor. That's a 9.30 Eastern start. Hope you'll stay with us for that one. The story right there at Arkansas is Scotty Thurman and Nolan Richardson reloading after losing four players to the NBA. Oh, yes. Great pass and a great handle by Calvert Chaney. And a poor job defensively by Michigan. The rule is you must see ball and man. Chaney has eight. The lead is two. Bailey going for the steal and ties up Howard. I think Indiana has to like the fact that Weber's playing out on the perimeter, that he is not able to get the ball in deep where he really causes havoc. He was interesting to interview yesterday. What a bright young guy. I tell you, we really had a great time talking to him. King, offensive foul, no basket. Phil Bova with the call. Jimmy King up in the air. That's two on Jimmy King. 
Martin. There he is, flying in the air. Once you leave your feet, defensive player rotates over. Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, Indiana. They excel at stepping in and taking the charge. Indiana's ball. The Hoosiers up by two. Graham first down the lane, tried to get it off, knocked out of bounds by Michigan. That's Dugan Fife, number 11, the freshman out of Clarkston, Michigan. His dad was the captain of the 70-71 Michigan team. Yeah, his dad, Dan, also, not only did he play here, he served as an assistant in the mid-70s for Michigan under Johnny Orr. And they had to finish number two to all those great teams of Indiana, led by Quinn Buckner and Benson and company. Is Dugan Fife a great name or what? He's a steady player, too. Solid, gives him some stability. Henderson down the lane, Weber reached in from behind and knocked it away. One thing that Bobby Knight has to be really content with is the fact they have neutralized the running game of Michigan. Cheney, what a great touch. You know, this guy did no, was not a preseason unanimous selection oh, that's a joke. in the Big Ten. That's I'd like joke. to find a guy who didn't vote him to the top five players in the Big Ten and take him outside and show him what basketball <laughs> that's, is. That's absurd. I couldn't agree with you more, Mike. Weber was the only unanimous selection. Fight oh, wide open, wouldn't take the shot. And you've got to take that shot if you're wide open. You've got to look at the basket. They're not even looking at the basket. The rule of thumb is to catch the ball and put yourself in triple threat position, which means you can shoot, you can pass, or you can drive to the goal. Otherwise, they get to double-team someone for free. Major college players got to look at the basket from up on top. See, this plays into the hands of Indiana. Half-court basketball, Indiana gets the edge. This tempo. Indiana has to like that tempo. Turnaround jumper by Juwan Howard. Missed everything, but we have a foul underneath. Check it. No foul. Just knocked out of bounds. Out to Michigan. Jalen Rose's dad, Jimmy Walker, the former superstar. I used to love him in 1967. Was the number one pick of the Pistons in the NBA draft. In fact, he was number one overall. Number two was Earl Monroe. And number three, Clem the Jim Haskins doing a great job at Minnesota. And Weber told me, eat your heart out, Haskins. He told me you were number two, that he was going to go to Minnesota if he didn't come here. He said he loved Clem. Well, Minnesota's already stunned a couple of people. One of seven Big Ten teams in the top 25 this week. Why picked up his dribble? He's wide open on that wing. Shot clock is at 17. Weber set for a three. I'd let him shoot that all day if I were Indiana. Rose gets the easy follow in the lane. I don't care what his statistics are from three-point range. I'd allow Chris Weber to shoot that three all day if I played against Michigan. Cheney cut off at the baseline, out to Nover. Excuse me, to Brian Evans. Bailey. Pretty shot by Greg Graham. That's the one thing we said on top of the show. For Indiana have to have a real shot, they're going to have to make their perimeter shot. Graham has seven. The lead is five. Now Weber down low, maneuvering on Henderson. That's where he can really just dominate people. I mean, you talk about an m and if he gets it down there. That's like the beauty contest with Cindy Crawford walking in with her bikini and Phyllis Diller with hers. <laughs> That's good. Now they should use about seven, eight passes to quiet the crowd down. With a three. That's going to make Coach Knight really happy. Sat next to him in practice today. He said, Dick, look, he doesn't miss in practice. He's got good range. Had that big performance against Seton Hall. King trying to counter with a three in and out. Evans with a rebound. And the freshman from Evansville has had a definite impact since coming in. Bailey on the run. Kicks it off to Anderson. Good penetration. Dribble penetration by Bailey. Duke does that so well. Dribble penetration and look for the open man. Allen Henderson has 10. Bailey got the great assist. And it's 34-26. Indiana's biggest lead. See now, if you're Chris Weber, a superstar, you got to start to really take over. Look at that. Unorthodox, but he knocks it down. Jalen Rose. Rose, who has had trouble with the outside shot this year, shooting 18%, drained that one. And the crowd right back in it. See, here's where I'd make. Let's count the passes, Mike. We saw one so far. There's two. There's three. I'll get a hand. You know, I'll put a hand on four. I can count. I got my Masters in 30. 
There's five. Five. Wide open. left alone. Missed that one. He's Weber got, with another rebound. He's got to shoot that one. He's a good shooter. He's wide open. Five passes. And Fife will take his shot. And you're right. Both of those guys have to take the shot. Bailey for three. He's got it. He's been on fire the last two games. Came off the bench, scored 49 points. Had 21 against Iowa off the bench and 28 against Penn State. First time in his career, he's had back-to-back -back 20s. The lead is back to eight points. Big possession right now for Michigan. They need a deuce in this possession. Fife tries to go baseline and can't. Howard to Weber left all alone out there again. It could go up to 10 if they don't score here. Of course, that one didn't get the roll. And look at Brian Evans, another rebound. See, Damon Bailey, I like what he did right there. He said, give me the ball. Give me the rock. Let's get some patience. Brian Evans has given them some huge minutes off the bench. Spread the floor. I think it gets a young team like this. You spread the court, you pass the ball five, six times, you screen, you get the really high percentage shot. 1-11 to go first half. Cheney. Here's Fife with a long rebound. That was a great shot. A little curl move into the foul lane area. We've hit the one-minute mark at Michigan. Number two against number six, and right now number six is up by eight. Fife, nice speed to Howard in the lane. That's what they worked on yesterday in practice, Mike. Bring the ball from the top of the circle into the post area because the defense cannot give help. They can't get the angles to help from the weak side because of the ball being in the center of the court. Cheney blocked by Weber. This is what you don't want if you're playing them. They're ready to explode. Oh, nice. Bailey strips King. What a great defensive play by Damon Bailey. I think it's amazing when you think about beating Kansas and North Carolina back-to-back -back in 24 hours and then beating Purdue on the road like they did when they were top 10. Every time on a baseline like he did to Cheney. Shot clock is off. This is Polinka to inbound to Vosco. Polinka really excited today. Got admitted into Michigan Law School. Early admission at Northwestern Law School, Illinois, 3.9 GPA. He's on the court with uh, Vosco, a kid who's majoring in aerospace engineering, wants to work for NASA. He told me today, though, he said, I want to play a little basketball. Hey, Indiana, no slouch. Five players with a better than three-point average. Chris Reynolds, 3.68. Allen Henderson, 3.1. Here it Here's comes. Rose working for the last shot. Gets it to Polinka, blocked by Henderson. Rose saves it. Desperation shot and nearly hit it. Damon Bailey starts the second half with a three. Little dribble penetration into the gap to get Bailey to basketball. And a little soft on the perimeter. That was one of their priorities they talked about. Weber didn't get the roll down inside. Loose ball, now a jump ball situation. Indiana spoke today, Mike, about priorities and how you have to adjust against different teams. And against Michigan, Coach Knight wanted to play them. His, his talk was all about play them soft on the perimeter, not really hard out on the exterior, but jam inside. Jalen Rose with that very quick jump shot. He's got that quick release, almost like a jump hook. 40 to 33. Greg Graham back the other way. Henderson, who had a big first half with 10 points. There's two passes. There's three. Remember we said we think they got to get at least five passes, got to reverse the ball. If you swing it side to side, you'll break a defense down. There's four. Bailey for another three. Wide open goal, Mike. I mean, a wide open look. Key for Indiana. They must make the perimeter shot. Really getting back to neutralize that transition game of Michigan, where they excel in the open court. Rose with Cheney out on him. The chart, the transition game of Michigan, it really was non-existent in that first half. They only had about five transition opportunities. Michigan has such size that Indiana cannot play that three-guard offense. Well, they're starting to put Weber down inside a little more. Weber, the second time in a row, did not get the roll on the soft short jumper. Graham with a lot of quickness. Gets it off to Nova and he's fouled. Michigan looks a little flat right now, and Indiana's breathing them up the court. Indiana right now created the numbers in transition. Foul was on Bosco. That's his first. You know, you know we're, we're, we're quick to jump on officials when we think they're not doing a good job. But I think tonight, uh, Ed Hightower, Phil Bova, and Jim Burr have done a sensational job in a very emotional game. They're allowing the number one to play. They're solid guys. They're very experienced. Nover has the only free throws for Indiana tonight, and he is 0 for 3. 
Indiana as a team makes more free throws than the other team attempts. Every year, that's one statistic that's usually constant. The same with down at Duke. Nover now one of four, and the lead is back to eight. Indiana's biggest lead of the ball game was nine. Oh, good bad pass. Here's Graham. Oh, reverse slam. I don't know if you need that right now. A little reverse jam, a little showtime. You brick that baby. You think you go to the bench? The lead is 10. You go to the bench and maybe to another school. <laughs> no, he's a senior. He has no more eligibility. Well, you won't get to finish your senior year then. King from outside. That's a big three. Well, he's been knocking the big three down. And as I said, they're playing him soft on the wings. As you notice, nobody was even up in the face. He is the fourth best percentage three-point shooter in the history of Michigan basketball. So I think anytime Michigan scores like they did right there, you've got to slow it down, back it out, spread the court, and use that 45-second clock. You can keep these guys from getting momentum. You've really taken something away from uh, them. Great, great pass, and then a bad pass by Cheney. He overpassed the basketball. He anticipated a cutter. Too great a shooter. If Cheney touches it there, you want him to shoot it. See, notice they'll play soft. Notice how Graham backs away from Rose? He backs right away. See, notice how soft? That's playing soft on a perimeter. Soft on Weber. Got Juwan Howard down in the low post. Soft, and now Weber open. joins him, and Rose hits it. Jalen Rose has 11, and the lead has been cut to five. And now he signals he wants to make like a cheerleader. He said, I knocked down the deuce. Now I'll make like a cheerleader and get the crowd involved. Jalen Rose, big-time winner. Bailey has Bosco on it. Oh, they missed Henderson in the three-second area, wide open. Cheney guarded by Jalen Rose. Nover against Weber. Weber with a rebound. Oh, here they go. He's looking to make the pass. He's here comes the big guy. Oh, 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 he's the 2 man. He's marvelous and magnificent, Mr. Weber. And then he cheers and gets the crowd going. Cheney to quiet the crowd and doesn't. Shot too quickly. After a layup like that by Mr. Weber, momentum. You don't want to shoot. Get it to you, Get it to you, Bobby. Get it to you, Bobby. Jalen Rose cuts it to one. He's got to get it to you. He can't be stubborn here. He's got to get it to you. Henderson answers at the other end. Except to get the to you. We're going to get execution to get a deuce. That's why he's won 601 games. Some guys wait for that TV timeout every four minutes. Weber for three. That's Chris Weber. The real Chris Weber, the real deal, has arrived in the second half. Just like he did against Purdue. A he guy who can rebound, lead a fast break, hit the three. Lead the cheers. 45 all, whistle away from the ball. Indiana is totally out of sync right now. Momentum, the priceless crazies are going bananas. This timeout is big. <laughs> to those, tied at 45. Reynolds is in. He's taking Rose right now. Seems like, seems like Weber now is turned into another gear. A little more animated out there. Switching on him inside. Henderson releases him down to Nova. King is guarded by Leary. Shot clock at 15. King should win that matchup. He's a little too quick for him. Howard, hand blocked by Henderson. Henderson doing a great job defensively in the lane. This is where I back it out. Patience, patience, poise. That's exactly what they're doing. Reynolds, the senior from Peoria, Illinois, in the backcourt with Todd Leary. Spacing 15, 17 feet apart. Get away help so they cannot give help, Michigan. Reynolds, no threat to shoot the ball. Cheney got it. He's a threat to shoot the ball. Crunch time, Cheney time. He has a dozen, needs three more points to catch the number nine all-time Big Ten scorer, Cassie Russell. Cassie responsible for this building. Bosco with a miss. Cassie Russell had that great run in the early 60s here at Michigan. Tremendous talent. Indiana with a ball up by two. 14.02 to go. Trying to back screen for Greg Graham. 
Oh, nice move by Cheney. Henderson, who has shown a beautiful touch tonight, has 14 points. Oh, that was created by Cheney. A little dribble penetration, defense aware of him, and he gets the ball to his teammate. Weber muscles it up against Henderson, and he's fouled. That's where Mr. Weber has to play. I mean, are you kidding me with his power and size? You talk about the NBA draft. I believe this guy will probably be number one. There he is getting the ball in deep. Some people said the other day, he said he probably will come back to school. I don't believe it, Mike. I think when he stares at the kind of dollars that will come his way, I believe that Weber, Mashburn, and Hardaway will be part of the NBA draft because how thin that senior class is. I'll tell you what, Dick, if Shaquille O'Neal will stay in school three years, why wouldn't it Chris Weber? Palenka with a follow on the miss. That's a good I mean, point. they don't come any better than Shaq. That's a good point you make, but I really believe he's leaving, Mike. Plus, really both do. of his parents work, Dick, and it's not, it's not a situation where they desperately need the money. I really feel, though, when you're staring at the kind of dollars he is, Chris, Shaquille O'Neal was a rare kid to be able to pass those dollars down and come back for that extra year. I asked Steve Fisher about it today, and he said, I'm just going to enjoy it as long as all of them are here. Well, a little triple team on Howard Leeds. Weber, Weber had his foot on the line. That's a two-point shot. We are tied at 49. Well, you have to give something against Michigan, and they're giving the perimeter shot. Henderson with a long-range bomb. He's showing that he's a super south as well. He says, you know, you talk about all these southwest sensations. I can play, too. Rose, great move. Missed the shot, got his own rebound. That was oh, all right for Henderson. Interference, got to count that basket. Boy, oh. it sure looked like a goaltend. Yeah, they missed that call. Goaltended. Steve Fisher very calm about it. Oh, I thought they definitely missed that. They've done a heck of a job. Rich Falk is here, the head of the Big Ten officiating, does a super job with them, evaluating them constantly. It's the oh. first time we've been critical of a call all night. Must yep. be a new record for us. They were trying to post up inside with Rose. Oh, nice head fake. Howard, a little fall away. He loves to go to his left. Every time he catches the ball, if he is going to go into a scoring mood, he is going to put the ball to the left. Jawan Howard with 10. We are tied again. Look at Rose wants to challenge a play in Cheney. Cheney double teamed. He's fouled. That's the great thing to see right there at Calvert Cheney. He's been really labeled as a soft player in his career, constantly looking for the jump shot. But he says here, come on, Jalen, I'm going to split the defense, and I'm going to show that I can drive, too. And I'm going to force the action to go to the free throw line. Weber was lucky he didn't pick up his third as it was. Rose got his second. And Cheney will go to the line, a 73% free throw shooter. Like, you know, you talk about aggressive basketball, and it really is keyed by the shot block. And here's Mr. Weber, who really came out strong here in the second half. I believe aggressive basketball, certain things happen. One, you have deflections. Two, you have block shots. Three, you have offensive rebounding. And four, you're forcing turnovers with steals. And tonight, you're seeing aggressive basketball. Cheney, the number three all-time Indiana scorer, will have a chance to finish number one all-time, passing Steve Alford. Now, here's the free throw story. Indiana, as we said, making more free throws than their opponents get. But tonight, it has been a struggle. They just haven't been there. And when they get there, they haven't shot well. Does the calm Mr. Knight? And his 600th win now has 601. The youngest man to achieve that since Hank Iba, who's certainly one of his real i mean you talk about a guy real guru of basketball pete newell and hank iva mean everything to bobby knight nover picked up his second foul on that push underneath indiana only two out of six from the free throw line tonight that's amazing they did the same against kansas four for 13. rose works on graham he shoots right over the top of him gets him into an isolation clear out one-on-one. -on -one. Jalen Rose has 15. Indiana right back the other way. Loose ball taken down by Riley. Indiana and the King. Indiana doesn't win the matchup if they try to play that quick. And what a luxury to have Riley to come off the bench to give Weber a breather. Second leading rebounder in the Big Ten two years ago, Eric Riley. And it looked like Nover is going to pick up another three. That you know you really have to weigh all your options, your family needs, whether you stop enjoying college. I think that'll be the biggest thing. If it's, you know, where I'm not enjoying college, where uh, there's too much pressure off the court uh, to be a 
to be something that you're not or, you, you know, some type of thing like that. But I do think the money is definitely something. That, and the biggest thing is the dreams. You know, I've dreamed since growing up to play in college and, and be a star and play in hopefully the NBA. But I think that when I think I've reached my potential, if I haven't reached my potential, I'm not going anywhere. He's a very bright young man. That was Jimmy King hitting the three to give Michigan a four-point lead. Indiana had been up by nine. Jimmy King with that big three. Chris Weber, though, what a dominant player against good people. He really rises against the better people. Bailey and Graham in at the guards. This is Graham hits a three. We talk about a big three. I mean, King knocks one down, and Graham comes back when Indiana needs one badly. Greg Graham in his last couple of ball games, the last few games, really, shooting nearly 60% from long range. Had six threes in his last two games, scoring 36 points, Mike. Against Penn State and against Iowa when Iowa came in undefeated. It's a one-point game again. Passing go away. Howard likes it down the lane. He's really effective inside. He's got an excellent touch. He's got quick feet. He's an excellent post player. 58-55. Michigan by three. Michigan's intensity certainly picked up here in that second half. Damon Bailey, who sometimes dissolves into the background, and Bob Knight says he doesn't want him there. He wants him right in the middle of everything. There he is right there, a little curl move. He's thinking pass right now. He's really trying to play like a quarterback and distribute the basketball. Evans, got it! There's that stroke of Evans. They've been waiting for this guy to explode. He does it every day in practice. This has just been a marvelous run for both ball clubs. 58-58. You got a matchup on King. He can shoot the ball, but that's the, that's the pattern they worked on all day yesterday. Bring the ball to the top, and then enter the ball right down into the big guy in a three-second area. Jawan Howard gets the basket, and he's fouled. See, there's the pattern they worked on. Steve Fisher doesn't get enough credit. He was in his gym yesterday, and they consistently worked on that for about 40 minutes in their practice session. Called the foul on Damon Bailey. 14 points, only three round rebounds for Jawan Howard. Perry Watson, the assistant coach, had a walk with him before the Purdue game because he didn't rebound really well. He came back strong. Weber will come back into the ball game, and Howard will get a breather. Weber's numbers jumped up quickly, didn't they, after halftime? Sure did. 61-58, Michigan now by three as we hit the 10-minute mark. Cheney, nice pump fake. You talk about making big shots. One pass in the shot. 15 points for Calvert Cheney. He's now tied Cassie Russell for number nine all-time in the Big Ten. Oh, he'll be the all-time leading scorer. Glenn Rice right now in the Big Ten is number one. Weber with a beautiful jump hook. He's just made his mind up. I'm going inside. I got the little jump hook. I have the great body. I can steal off the defensive people. Isn't it beautiful to see all the stars rising, making the big plays? Cheney, Weber. I mean, this is unbelievable, baby. Weber has 17. Back screen by Evans. He's hit 11 of those 17 in the second half. Jalen Rose trying to match up on Cheney. Shot clock approaching 15. Bailey kicks it outside to Grant. Nover. Using that shot clock. Bailey to Nover. Great pass. What super execution. There were approximately eight passes in that possession, and they break the defense down with a layup. 68-62. Rob Palenka in the ballgame. Here's Weber down low again. Missed this one. And then he Henderson. But that's a great shot by Weber. That's really heady play. I don't buy the argument that Michigan doesn't play with smarts. They've been playing excellent basketball. There's the bounce pass. Good play by Bailey. Two-man game, but what made that so really good was the fact they utilized the shot clock. And Michigan was brilliant at the end of the game against Kansas and North Carolina. Indiana with a chance to regain the lead. Henderson. I mean, all the stars are rising. You talk about stars who get excited to perform. I mean, are you kidding me? Come on, Mike, get excited. They can't let him shoot the ball. Palinka's a good shooter. 
King, great save to Palenka. Palenka. What a play by Jimmy King. Palenka's done a real solid job, giving them some stability since they lost Ray Jackson, who's their defensive stopper. He doesn't make mistakes. Notice how soft they're playing on the wing. You can't play Jimmy King soft. He'll shoot that three. So will Palenka. Riley hustles after the long rebound. King for three. You're right. Can't allow him to shoot it. There's Ray Jackson cheering tonight. Cheers for his roomie. That's his roommate. They're both from Texas. Jimmy King has 11. The lead is two. He'll be back in a week and a half. Ray Jackson. Well, that's what he says. Steve Fisher says it'll be longer than that. Those are cooking. 73% for Indiana, Michigan for 60. And I tell you what, the way they are playing right now, those percentages may go higher. The execution's really been outstanding. Really heady play by Michigan to slide Weber inside. Oh, look, look at Michigan changing defenses a little here. Look at this, going to a, they're trying to get him into a trapping area. Jalen Rose trying to lead him into a trap. Little zone. Looks like a little 1-3-1. One, one. They pass over it. Graham gets it in the corner to Henderson. Great pass to Nover. He's fouled, but the shot would not go. They did a great job executing, going down and gutted that zone, bringing the ball to the wing, and then sliding Nova down the lane. But he's going to have to convert on a free throw line where he really has not shot well. Foul was on Bosco, and Nova is a noisy one out of four from the free throw line tonight. You know, as long as they don't get in foul trouble with their big people, Henderson and Nova, the depth factor doesn't become big having only nine players. The problem is, though, they lost the quality players. He misses the free throw in Pat Graham, which hurts their motivational edge, as Bobby Knight was telling me today. He said, when I had Pat Graham, if I put him on the floor and he knocked down two threes, and I got Bailey sitting next to me, you think it wakes him up? <laughs> you think it wakes Graham up? And the earliest they would expect Pat Graham back would be in March. I doubt that very much from what I heard, Mike. I really do. I think that it looks like he'll lose another year. It's unfortunate he's lost two years thus far with a foot injury. Real shame for him. In the NIT, it happened against Florida State where he played brilliantly. Michigan by one. And we've got a pushing foul against Indiana as Jimmy King went sailing out of bounds. Michigan's only losses since they went on their run last year after beating Indiana. Look at Weber now. See, he wants the ball down inside. He loves to pass the basketball. Very unselfish. I think he's a little bit too unselfish. I think he's got to want to take the ball in that deep to the basket. Rose takes Greg Graham down low with him. He's just a clutch, big-time, crunch-time player. Jalen Rose made the big tip to beat North Carolina and give them their only loss. And, and Dick, I what you said in the first half, I think, was perfect for Jalen Rose. He has a feel for the game, and he's always had it. Steve Fisher says he has the best instincts of any player he's ever coached. Graham to Cheney's fouled by Rose, who reached in and tried to get the steal. That's his third. What a winner out of Southwestern High School would have produced so many players. Perry Watson now an assistant. Antoine Joubert, who played here at Michigan from Southwest. Anderson Hunt, who played at UNLV. Bashan Leonard now starring for Minnesota. Damon Bailey checks back into the ball game as Leary will sit down. Indiana's committed 16 fouls, Michigan only five. It has been a very well-played game. Good move by Michigan to come out of that zone. Nova, way too strong. Henderson offensive rebound, and he is fouled by Weber, who thought he got all ball. That's four on Weber, I believe. I think it's four on Weber. That's what I have him with, four. Decision time by Steve Fisher. I don't think any decision. you got to get him out. Well, there's 6.15 to go in the game, and Riley is up off the bench pretty nice when you go to Riley who's second leading rebounder in the Big Ten two years ago and he can't start for this team there's the little jump shot there's Henderson see but Henderson a little slow he has to regroup to go to the goal Weber he just bounces off the floor and got the dunk in that situation Henderson has struggled at the free throw line this year 63.5 percent he had a streak where he had six straight double-doubles, so he's not just a scorer. He's been a terrific rebounder. He's a great student, too. Better than 3.0 average. That's Chris Reynolds with a 3.6. Greg Graham a 3.1. Todd Leary with a 3.7. Here's Perry Watson. Southwestern high fame here in Detroit. Had a great record. Vasco. 
Rebound to Nova. Indiana down by one. They have the ball, 5.59 to go. Well, you knew it was going to come down to this, didn't you? Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. If you're Indiana now, you want to really, with each possession, get the best shot possible. Henderson with a leaner. I don't Bosco got the rebound. That's not a good look at the basket. I'm really surprised at some of the impatience by Indiana offensively in her half-court execution. Riley wants it down low against Henderson, and Henderson picked his pocket. See, now if you're Indiana, spread the court. See, Bailey wants the ball. He's really maturing as a backcourt perimeter, not being concerned about scoring. You know, that's only the sixth turnover by Michigan, and they've been averaging 17 turnovers a game. They have protected the ball brilliantly. Cheney for three. Somebody's got to tell Michigan he can shoot the rock. Nobody's matching up. He's getting a great look where he can square his body, catch the ball, and have time to shoot the basketball. Cheney has 18, Indiana by two. We come down to five minutes. Bosco wants Howard. I think he'll get Weber in at the four-minute mark. Jawan Howard. Big what? shot. Nice rotation. Good soft touch. He's got great hands when we talk about soft hands. Jawan Howard has 17. We're tied again. Oh, this is amazing. I'll tell you, what a great, great game in college basketball. Two heavyweights. Holofield, Riddick, Bo. This is marquee, baby. Let's just go three overtimes and really enjoy it. Oh, wow. Why not five? See, there's a screen away. Ball sides is the strong side. Help side is the play away from the ball. Graham missed a shot. Howard with another rebound. Not too many second and third shots against that rebound. Bosco! Big three! I mean a big three factor! They're gonna say he was on the line. It is a two-point shot. Ooh, they gave him a deuce. 72-70. It's gone back and forth. Cheney for three. Nover nearly had the rebound. It was knocked out of his hands out to Indiana. Nova looked a little bit well for the challenge that Indiana has put in front of them because really they rely so much in transition and Indiana's done a super job keeping them away from transition layups. Henderson as they run Cheney around multiple There's screens screen. finally get him open for three, missed it. He got the good look at the goal with the great screen by Henderson. Henderson blocked by Weber. Nova follow. Nova with the great follow. Weber excels if he's in help position defensively where he can get that angle for that block shot. Weber with a great block on the first one. Couldn't get the second one. He's 3.20 to go in the game. Well, they're trying to get him down in deep. Against Henderson and he's pushed by Henderson so Weber will go to the free throw line. Not a bad move at all to put him on the free throw line. At best he's a 50% shooter on the free throw line. That will be the seventh team foul on Indiana, but it's a shooting foul anyway. He didn't miss. He didn't miss yesterday of practice on that free throw line. See, I think he plays with the ball too much. Leaves himself too much margin of error. Pump to the ball. See, he starts down by his waist, and he really pumps the ball. See the point breakdown? Look at Michigan now. In transition, they have 15 points. Half-court game, 50 points. Special teams, special situations. Free throw line, inbounds for the sideline, only seven. Usually that's reversed. Majority of their points are coming now from their half-court game. Weber hits only one of two. It is a one-point lead for Michigan. Patience right now and poise and ball movement and screening. Cutting and screening is so essential for Indiana with each possession. Nova lays some good screens. Actually, they're trying to screen the first option. Crunch time, you want Cheney to be your first option. Henderson, great pass to Cheney. What a big basket! Incredible! He's the 3S man! Super sensational! Scintillating Mr. Cheney! Calvert Cheney has 20. Indiana back up by one. What a great curl move in the lane. And a great look by Henderson with his size. Good vision. Jalen Rose off. He's got it. I mean, it looks like a force. It looks like a force shot. And yet he converts with the baseline, Jay. Jalen Rose has 19, and Michigan has regained the lead. Wow. Cheney won't fall for him. Nova kept it alive. Out to Indiana. Cheney really exploded on the baseline. Really has improved his driving ability. 
See, Michigan's got to rotate over. Here comes Shady on the baseline. Good rotation by Howard, where he had the dunk. Foul line extended right now. Duke likes to run this 2-3 with a little foul line extended with this possession. Now they're going to slide down inside with Nova. Going to try to make Michigan work with this possession on a defensive end. Shot clock at 22, game clock at 149. Well, they're thinking of their first option, who's really tough coming off the screen. There's Cheney. Shot clock now at 11. Henderson. Boy, he's hit one big shot after another. He has 22 points. That's part of their passing game. Movement without the ball, screening, use the shot clock, make six, seven, eight passes. And here's the guy that's been making all the big plays. He wants it in these situations. Bosco. And it rejected, and Damon Bailey comes out with it. Got to spread the court. Graham right now tells him, be patient. Michigan has to dig in defensively. Remember, free throw shooting can become big. Shot Neither. clock is now at 30, so there is a 30-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. In this situation they started foul line extended and then they get spacing 17 to 18 feet apart so you can't give help Bailey looks low to Cheney double team down oh. and threw it away great Bad defense play. by Michigan Jalen Rose oh. Weber kept it alive King on the floor tied up by Anderson and in Anderson is he is the worst of the starters on the court and Damon Bailey has it in his hands down to Graham. You want to spread the court. You want to spread the court. Leary, excellent shooter. They would like Leary to be fouled because oh. he's a 90% shooter. Spread the court. Get the ball out of your hands. They've got to foul somebody. There it is. Now, what about the intentional? That could have easily been called an intentional What about the foul? intentional? I really have a problem with the rule in terms you see so many times. They say, well, if you're playing the ball when it's obvious that is an intentional foul. Down both, you have to think three. Todd Leary with his first shot of the night. He's hit 18 out of 20 on the year. And somebody has committed a lane violation, I believe. Holy cow, what a call this would be. Bob Knight just said, are you kidding me? I don't think they're talking about a lane violation as much as you're talking about you have X number of seconds. And Phil Bova trying to explain it to Bob Knight. You don't want to get a technical. I'm confused here, Mike. I'm confused. You have X number of seconds from the time. Couple of things that could have happened, and Bob Knight is just outraged by this. Michigan has called a timeout. And the, play, the Indiana player left the lane. I think the referee, I'm not sure, but I think he handled the basketball, and an Indiana player left the lane, and that is a violation. I may be wrong. That is one thing running through my mind because I saw some movement. I would love to get the official to get it really here in first hand, but that is my gut feeling what happened. That Technically, once the shooter has been given the ball, nobody is supposed to move. The shooter's not allowed like to back away. Everybody has to assume their spots. I think somebody stepped off the lane. I think somebody's saying now that Cheney may have stepped off the lane. Unbelievable that they would lose the game in that situation. Good call by the official if it happened, Mike. Yeah, but can you imagine a game like this being decided by a technicality like that? That's well, mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing, but really the technicality, the technical end of it has to be called by the True. official. And the bottom line is Michigan still must score. And they've got 14.1 seconds to do it. So Indiana had their best free throw shooter at the line with a one and one and a chance to give Indiana a three-point lead. Now Michigan, with any kind of basket, can win the ball game. A lane violation was called against Indiana. A lane violation was called. The announcer just made a statement now here it is you got to regroup right now if you're in the end and think about defense now look right here they're going right now to what kentucky did against duke and not playing the guy throwing the ball inbounds they're going to try to protect five against four with a center fielder jawan howard will inbound see henderson's going to play center field 
And Jalen Rose, the guy they want with the ball, has got it. You know he wants to take it to the goal. Watch Weber on a missed shot. Watch Weber on a missed shot. Bosco. Wow.